Good morning. Thank you for tuning in to another pre-market poll scan. Today is Friday, Take Back Friday, March the 17th, 2017. The time is late. It is 24 minutes after 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're getting right into it. Looking at the overnight markets, we have bonds are pretty much flat, uh, only off uh, 230 seconds at 147.30. Made an amazing comeback. We're at at least a point from that two-point deficit the other day. Looking at the Dow, the Dow features right now is up about 38 points. The NASDAQ is flat. S&P is up a point and a half. And oil, oil is up 37 and a half cents at 49.62 and a half. And the dollar is in jeopardy of falling below par. We have, we're at par 36 after coming off of par 14 low. Very interesting. Gold, gold uh, ran up to 1231.40 last night, and right now we're at 1228.70. Silver ran up to 1741 and is currently at 1734. And natural gas ran up to 294. Right now we're at 293. So that is where we stand at the moment. Gold is looking like it wants to break out. Um, I'm looking to possibly be a buyer of gold today. May even jump into the futures. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, looking at the pulse waves today, if you take a look at your in play tab, we're going to look first look at what kind of um, crash alerts we have. We normally start at the rally alerts, but today we're going to start at the crash alerts. All right, I have a crash alert here for the NASDAQ 100. Being that it is Take Back Friday, those of you who are students at the Learning Academy, those of you who have graduated from the Learning Academy, meaning that you have gone through all of the videos and all the tutorials and webinars, you are familiar with Take Back Friday and what constitutes a Take Back Friday. NASDAQ 100 qualifies for a Take Back Friday, so coming into the day with a crash alert means that you can expect for the market to possibly come off. Doesn't mean that it will. These rally and crash alerts are there as guides to alert you to the possibility of such a thing based on the price action. So, looking at the NASDAQ 100, that is one to note. Also, the Dow futures, um, S&P futures, junk bonds, ticker symbol J&J. &J. Uh, those are the ones of note. Uh, let's see, I mentioned the NASDAQ. So that will bode well for the, the QQQ and the TQQQ. Got to look at that. Uh, let's see what else we got of note on here. Uh, on the volatility shares, um, nope, that's not it. Wrong one. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, looks like we have it on the GDXJ. So watch out on the miners, all right? Especially if the GDXJ does not trigger long today. If it doesn't trigger long, then you're going to really, if you're coming into today long, the GDXJ, you're going to want to tighten up that stop. All right, so you can ride it and see what happens here. Because if it's going to pull back, you don't, you don't want to be long. So in the, in the whole stock index future space, we have the crash alert. We have a lot of crash alerts today all over the place. Um, so... We even have it in the oil space, like uh, ticker symbol OIH. So you see that. Let's see what else. We even have it in the bonds, ticker symbol TLT. Uh, it's all over the place. So definitely uh, be careful. Take caution. And it is Friday. You know my rule. I, I, I generally do not put on or initiate new trades on Friday. A lot can happen over the weekend, and you will be surprised. So... Barring any events, things will continue as usual on, on the following Monday. But we live in uncertain times. So my rule is I generally will not put on new positions on a Friday. I will wait until Sunday when the new pulse waves come out and institute my trades at that time. But that's just me. 
you can feel free to do whatever you wish. But as for me, that's how I roll. All right. What else here? Um, something else to point out. Let's take a look at the inverse ETF space for a minute because I want to look at the rally alerts. And we do have a rally alert in dry ships. I know you guys saw that, dry ships. That's funny. So dry ships has a rally alert. Of course, the inverse ETFs like Doug, TBT, um, you know, JDST. Uh, let's point out a couple of these. That's our opening bell. Oh, even Dust has a rally alert. I want to show you something on the Dust, though. You'll notice that on Dust, and now that we have the opening bell, you can see where we're opening. We're opening at 3112 on the dust opening at 3112 notice on dust how your entry point is far removed from the market but let's just use that as an example and say that let, let's say our entry point today was uh, closer to the market you have two different ones to choose from you have your normal entry point under the entry column but you also have your TRS uh, remember you can use TRS as an entry point especially if it's um, a low, if it's lower than the than the standard entry point, you can do that. You can do either or. There's no right or wrong answer with that. So I wanted to use the dust as an example to point that out to you. All right. Um, as far as stop loss, someone asked me about GDXJ. Yes, the new uh, the new stop loss on the sheet on today's sheet. Yes, you always want to use the current stop listed on the sheet, especially if that stop is higher than your current stop, all right? So just remember that. You never want to move your stop lower. You always want to move it higher to trail your position. So just remember that. So if the old stop, let's say, let's say you were trading a, something and your old stop was at 37, but today she comes out and says the stop is 33. You're not going to move your stop down to 33. You're going to keep it at 37. You only move your stop as the stop on the sheet moves up. Does that make sense? So if today's stop is lower, you do nothing. You leave your stop where it is. Okay? So just using that as, a, as an example. All right. So... As far as on the mining space, let's take a look at where we're opening right now. You can see right now the GDXJ is off 10 cents. No no big whoop there. JNUG is off 6. So let's just take a look at what you would do today on those. So let's see, GDXJ. All right, coming into today... And see your GDXJ, your stop is at 33 right now. All right, so you can leave your stop exactly where it is. On JNUG, your stop is at five and a quarter. So again, you can leave your stop there too. I would only tighten my stop beyond what is on the sheet. If you're in profit and you want to lock in some profit, then I would move the stop tighter and I would use the intraday stops for that. All right. So that's how you do that. If you're not in profit, leave your stops alone. Use the stops on the sheet. All right. If you're not in profit, leave your stops alone. All right. Use the stops on the sheet. If you're in profit, use the intraday stops so that you can uh, take profit ahead of the weekend if the market's going to pull back. If it's not going to pull back, by all means, ride your profits uh, into next week. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't just liquidate positions on Friday just because. No. Like I said, you know, you got to you gotta do the knowledge to everything. So for me, I look at, you know, what's green on the screen. And then, for the, you know, if I... If I feel a certain way, I'll tighten my stop. I'll use an entry stop. Boom, I'm out of there. Let the market pull back, take me out, fine. I'm flat. Other times, okay, I got green on the screen, uh, but I like the way the market's trending. It's not showing any sign of weakness or letting up. I'll just stick with my stop on the sheet and let it ride. No biggie. 
So when markets are trending, you got powerful trends, you can do that. It's not a problem. It's not going to hurt your bottom line. And you're not going to just get scared and run and cut a, and cut a trade off prematurely. You want to let your trades run as long as you can. All right, that's how that works. As long as the market is trending. If the market is flat, you never want to just tie up money for no reason. That's that's just not smart. All right. Uh, what am I looking at today? Well, my shopping list, I've broken it down. Remember I told you about you want to have like five stocks or five sectors that you're looking at or whatever? Well, I have mine broken down into sections. So I'm looking at bonds, I'm looking at oil, I'm looking at financials, I'm looking at the miners, I'm looking at the stock indexes, and I'm looking at your uh, your metals, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I do it. And then I make a decision based on that, what I want to do. Now, for me, gold and silver and the gold miners, that doesn't count as far as I'm concerned, as far as my five. Those are my standards that I trade every day. So it just doesn't matter. Those don't count. You're going to be in those anyway. The ones that count for me are, you know, the non relate anything not related to gold, silver, and the miners. So that's, you're going to look at net gas, your volatility shares. Uh, for stock indexes, I like the NASDAQ. So I'm looking at the Q section. I'm looking at, uh, you know, oil. And I'm looking at bonds. That's just how I do it. Your group can be your group. You know what I'm saying? You can you can trade it how you want to do it. And there's there's no right or wrong way for that. You can just you wanna you wanna tweak things to your level of comfortability and the things that interest you. For me, I've always done oil, I've always done the metals. I've always done bonds, so I stick to the things that, you know, that I'm used to. That's just me. So, there you have it. My section is the Nat Gas, Oil, Bonds, Volatility Shares, and the NASDAQ. So, that's that's my five outside of the gold, silver, and the gold miners. And then I have what I call my wild cards. My wild card section is the FANG stocks or the financials. When I say financials, I mean XLF, FAS, and FAS. So there you have it. That's how my stuff is broke down. So every day I'm trading the same thing. That's just me. So my shopping list is never going to change. I'm always going to be long or short gold, long or short silver, long or short the miners. And I'm always going to have a trade long or short net gas, long or short crude oil, long or short bonds, long or short volatility, and long or short the NASDAQ. So I never have to wonder, so what are you, what are you, what are you getting into today? What looks good to you? I'm always just going to be in those. I'm boring. I stick to what I know, and that's how I roll with it. And the sections that I just broke down to you is the sections that I know a lot about because that's how I got my start even when I worked on Wall Street those are the markets I traded the most and had to do the most research on and all that stuff and write reports and all that stuff so you stick to what you know you stick to what you know and you stick to what you like and then you just build your systematic approach on that all right so that's pretty much it man um, markets are open I'm expecting pretty much a a dull day and um, today's probably is going to be a profit taking day for most people and for others they may put on a position or two for me I'm looking to be honest with you I'm actually looking to initiate the only thing I'm looking to initiate today will be a gold play you know even though normally I don't initiate trades on a Friday but because of where we are in the gold chart I'm looking at possibly playing either gold futures outright, GLD, or the UGLD. That's where I'm at with it right now. Just, just FYI for you all, okay? I don't know what I'm going to do 
with it yet, but if I were going to put on a ticket today, it would be in gold or silver. I just haven't decided yet which one of those I'm going to do. But it is looking like I'm going to do gold and silver today. Probably won't do anything in the mining with the miners except possibly. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Because we're just talking about initiating new positions right now. So that's it. If I'm going to initiate a new position today on a Friday, which is opposite of what I normally do, it'll be gold, silver, and the miners. I'm not looking to do anything new in the others. I'm going to let today play out, see where the markets close on the weekly chart, and then be ready to do something on uh, on Monday. All right, so with that said, remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. Everyone have a blessed weekend. Trading room, hang on, because we ain't done. Prize.